Hello, my name is Mark Thorne. I'm the Applications Manager for Mixed Signal Products at Linear Technology. Today I'm going to talk about a very exciting new product, the LTC 2757 18-bit Digital to Analog Converter. This is a product aimed at the most demanding instrumentation and control applications where extreme accuracy and stability are paramount. Some examples would be laboratory calibration instruments, automated test equipment, or precision laser galvo scanners. This stack also features six soft span output ranges, range selection logic, if only a single range is required, double buffered data interface with readback, and offset and gain adjustment pins that are voltage controlled for compensating system level errors. Single and dual SPI interface devices will be available shortly. The LTC2757 is an R2R architecture, which is often referred to as a current output DAC. Note that it's only really a current output when the output is held at a virtual ground, which requires an output amplifier. The latter produces binary weighted currents, which are switched to either IOUT1 or IOUT2 in response to the digital input code. The DAC also includes several feedback and offsetting resistors that are selected according to the soft span range. The R2R architecture is inherently inverting, so we include matched reference inversion resistors, allowing a positive reference voltage to produce a positive output. Also notice that there are pins for gain and offset adjustment here and here. These are voltage inputs that can be driven by a secondary lower resolution DAC. These are large value resistors that sum current into the reference inversion and output summing junction. The temperature coefficient is matched to the other internal resistors, so using these functions will not degrade drift performance. Let's take a look at the basic specifications. The LTC2757 has a guaranteed integral nonlinearity of one least significant bit over temperature. At the 18-bit level, one LSB is four parts per million. While the guaranteed INL is one LSB, this plot shows that a typical part has an INL of about a quarter of an LSB, or around one part per million. Gain error is guaranteed to be better than 0.012%, on par with the best references available. Offset in the bipolar ranges is 0.01%, and offset in the unipolar ranges is vanishingly small, dominated by leakage currents. Now let's talk about how to get the most out of this outstanding device. An R2R DAC requires an amplifier to convert the DAC output to a usable voltage output. Here's a short list of amplifiers that are suitable for use with the LTC2757. The LT1468 is our workhorse amplifier for 16-bit applications, and it's still appropriate for use with the LTC2757 when fast settling is required and when the amplifier's offset can be nulled out. The LT1012 is a great choice for the high voltage ranges. It comes close to chopper offset performance, yet is very low noise. It's also the amplifier we use to invert the reference on the LTC2757 demo board. The LTC1150 is a high voltage auto zero amplifier that will give great accuracy over all output ranges. And finally, here's a composite amplifier that achieves the best of three worlds, chopper accuracy, fast settling, and high voltage. This is the circuit that is included on the demo board. Any DAC is only as good as its reference voltage. The reference of choice for most applications is the outstanding LTC6655 which features incredibly low output noise of 1.25 microvolts peak to peak from 0.1 to 10 hertz, and a guaranteed temperature coefficient of two parts per million per degree centigrade. And here's a final tip for getting the most out of your LTC2757. If you notice in this schematic, the DAC supply is tied to the reference voltage. An R2R DAC is sensitive to supply noise as the gates of the DAC switches are either tied to ground or VCC. And since you already have a nice clean five volt reference, you might as well use it to power the DAC. We've got just enough time for a quick experiment. So here we have the LTC2757 demo board. This has the DAC on it, that composite amplifier that we talked about previously, all of the digital interface signals brought out to a convenient header, but we also make to, like to make this as easy as possible for you to evaluate. So we've got a serial interface to our, compu to our computer interface board and some shift registers on the back. These are transparent when you use the parallel interface. So here's the whole setup. We've got our computer interface board. We've got a PC running our quick evaluation software connected up to the DAC itself. So I've got the power removed from the DAC right now because I'd like to show you what happens when you first turn the circuit on. The software is programming it to go to one volt. 
and you'll notice that the voltage is slowly climbing up 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 7, 8, eventually. So this is that chopper stabilized amplifier correcting the offsets of the other amplifier. And once this is settled out the first time, slewing from one code to the next is, uh, is a matter of microseconds. That's a, a DC correction that's being applied. So let's, uh, let's perform some operations here with the software. So let's measure the offset by typing in a zero. And sure enough, we get about one microvolt worth of offset, 0.001 millivolts. That is the offset of the LTC2054 Auto Zero amplifier. And then let's look at the gain error by typing in full scale. So I type in 10 volts, but the software automatically truncates that to the, to the correct value uh, being quantized to the 18-bit level. Uh, note that the full scale is 2 to the 18th minus 1 code. So that's 9.49s and a 6.2. And what I really get here is 9.998. So we're out by about 2 millivolts, which is still well within the specifications of the voltage reference and the DAC combined. So how do we trim out that error? Well, you can do that. We've brought the ref adjust pin out to our little turret post. And I've connected it up to what we call a null box. This is just a voltage reference and a 10 turn potentiometer in a box. And if we turn that on, we can dial in to get 9.49s and a 6. Okay, so right about there, 0.62. So this is essentially exact. And to do that, we had to apply a correction voltage of about 96 millivolts. So you can see that a, an auxiliary 12-bit DAC is more than capable of trimming out the gain and offset errors of the whole system. So let's check a couple other points here. So if we type in 1 volt again, which gets truncated to 4 nines and an 8.5, 4 nines and an 8.2, that's not too bad. If we go to exactly mid-scale, we are out by 7 microvolts, so that's about 1 part per million. And if we go to another intermediate voltage, 7.5 volts, 7.49s, so we're out by about nine-ish microvolts here, so about one part per million out. This is, uh, this is what was shown in that INL curve. So this, uh, this gives you some idea of, the, of a quick performance test that you can do with our demo system. In conclusion, the LTC2757 is a state-of-the-art digital-to-analog converter that pushes the envelope on accuracy and stability. This translates directly into improved performance of your system. For additional information, please visit www.linear.com.